da 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 da. So, eyes here, meaning eyes back, eyes being me. T. Brother Patterson's taking the train to the bed. I know it's a little dark because it's, well, we're in blue light. So, uh, hey, shout out to Blue Light Brigade. Hey, uh, Lexo Dave. Don't know who he is. Uh, so, we're in blue light. Well, blue light in the Baza. Meaning, the blue light is a half hour before sunrise. Well, the 20, half hour before sunrise, then there's like 10 minutes before the half hour is up. So, between the 10 minutes and the half hour, it's like 20 minutes, and that's blue light. They call it some, something other places, but I like the color blue because, you know, I'm a child of Ogun, so what the heck, you know. And it's kind of, well, you see, let me just tell you, this, it's east that way, right? It's west that way. North is, no, wait, it's north that <laughs> It's north that way. South is that way, making east. Look, east is someplace, right? And that's where the sun is coming up. And, uh, you know, and I got to be on the other side of the house. Whatever east is that way. But, but that's what, whatever. No, east is that way. Yeah, east is over there. Uh, and usually, look, my, my, this is the one, uh, this is a, this is the Bojote hut house that we're in right now. And I'm in the, the, the space where we have the, 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 the bedroom. Well, not the bedroom. The other room is there. I have a bed in there. I used to, I like the, I like a cot better, but the cot's over someplace else because they're building a theater. They needed that there, then they put a bed here. Ah, I like the little sparks, you know. But here I messed up because like the north is like that way, right? And the south is that way, and we're in the southern hemisphere, so my head should be facing south when I'm sleeping. You see, and I've been sleeping north. That's messed up. So now I got to change things around. Da, 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 da. I'll start that tomorrow. Oh, but this is a, this is Sunday 8th. Uh, we're, we're back to our regular schedule. That means uh, Sunday is a, like a day that's it's the, um, how do you say, the, 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 the end of the, well, Sunday is the beginning of the week. And, uh, well, in some cultures, it's the beginning of the week. And uh, usually on Sunday, what I've been doing now is reading to you. I just started a few weeks ago, right? Now, I've been reading this fantastic book. Well, you can't read it backwards for you. Uh, it's a, uh, by this author, Chimamanda, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichere. Hey, look. A-D-I-C-H-I-E, that's the last name. It's called uh, Half of a Yellow Sun. I've had this book for a while. See, I, I go to books, I just uh, pull out books. And I, like, if I, see, I don't even read, I don't read the, the, the blurb, I just see if it, if, if it vibes, I pull out. So I just pulled it out. And I just noticed again, but this is, she is a winner of the 2007 Bailey Women's Prize for Fiction. She won a whole bunch of other prizes too, I guess, you know, for people. Anyway, the uh, winner prize she won is a, a, is a Chenoa Chebe Prize, you know, you know, things fall apart a lot. But, um, I, I met him one time. Yeah, I shook his hand. Uh, and also he shared a pr prize from, uh, uh, it was called, I think the, uh, uh, not the eyes but watching God woman. I don't know who she is. Uh, and uh, and uh, the outsider guy, you know. Uh, well, let me look up the prize, right? She won the. Uh, she won. She had a TED talk that's pretty famous. I guess that, that, that's what they're saying there. And Chenoa Chebe is the thing. The thing. Uh, the Pat Parker's or the wife or the associate professor of the associate was civil rights. Oh, she had the, uh, uh, she won the U.S. National Books Critics Circle Award. It was named New York Times 10 Best Books in, in the Year. I forget that year was, uh, that year was 2007, I suppose. Oh, no. 2006, yeah, 2006, she won that. Uh, uh, oh, she, she, uh, uh, she, she's author of People's Hibiscus, which won the Commonwealth Writers Prize uh, for Hurston, or the Hurston Rice uh, Legacy, that would be Zora Neale Hurston. Wait a second, how, be the, how can that be the Commonwealth? Because both Hurston and, and, and 
life, like, well, you know, Americans, you know, or black Americans, or when I say uh, American Africans, anyway, the point is, uh, but it was the Commonwealth Writers Prize. Commonwealth was from the England, right? And they both from the States. Yeah, but Wright was in Paris for a long time. I don't know how to say it. She won that prize. So, uh, anyway, so let me just read a little bit from this. I like the structure of the book. Oh, I'm, I'm, all, I'm halfway through. You said, but brother, you've been reading it all week. How come you're halfway through? Let me tell you what happens, okay? See, I read a lot of kind of different books, right? Now, uh, for a long time lately, I've been reading like nonfiction books. And nonfiction, I just picked up, you know, I, I don't read nonfiction like a fiction, like all the way through. I read some things and then I might put it down, pick, pick up another section and read that because, you know, that's the way nonfiction is. And, and academic books, are, or, or paper, academic papers, I read like that, you know. Academic paper, what you do is you read the, uh, the, that whole first thing, you know, the, 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 the abstract first. If it interests you, then, the, well, actually, you read the abstract and then you go and read the conclusion. Uh -huh. You can't read the research paper, you read the conclusion. Now, if that is to your liking, then you might read the, in, the introduction and then you might go to the methodology and all the rest of that stuff like that. Anyway, but with a novel, I read it all the way through. Now, here's the problem. The first novel I read all the way through nonstop was, um, what is it, Claude Brown? Uh, the brother that wrote Man Child in the Promised Land. Man, I got that book and I opened it. I started reading that. This is in the 60s mid 60s and I was so taken around I read I finished it in one night you know I love that book you know I think they made it some movie I've never seen the movie anyway well he passed a few, a few years ago anyway uh, so but, but then I, I read novels when I read novels I, I, when I used to read novels a lot I might go through a tale like I read all the Rick Stout's books you know the, uh, the, the, the books that were Archie in it and you know the, the, the fat detective guy read all to a tear, you know what I mean? I, I, read, I read all the Richard Rice books, all of them. <laughs> and one time, I, here's the thing. Look, I don't understand. Iron Rand, I read Iron Rand, right? Now, uh, it reminds first I did Fountainhead, I guess, and the first of the big ones, Atlas Shrugged there. But uh, then I read all, all her stuff, right? Including the one that really taken, I guess I was in the theater at the time, was uh, the, the theater piece that was it's a fantastic notion. It's a theater piece is a trial that takes place, but they recruit the, the jurors from the audience. They put them on stage. So they so each night the play turns out differently because the audience, rather than the, the child, the, 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 the jurors that come from the audience, they have to render a verdict according to the evidence. Whatever. But anyway, she has, it's supposed to be some political writer. You know, she's the one that all these right wing, they call them right wing, right wing people uh, uh, love or whatever it is, right? And I never, you know, first of all, to me, she's just a how you call it, a romance writer? Uh, 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 look, uh, it's entertaining, but it's not no profound thing. And I also read her, her polemics and stuff like that. And think about what, what, uh, whatever she is, right? She, she was against uh, socialism or whatever it is. And then what happened is she, at the end of her life, she ended up on welfare and stuff like that. So she had to take the socialism. Anyway, that's what people are. Anyway, so I just don't know the thing about her because to me, her writings are just like, they're just like, so, <laughs> and she ain't no great writer, you know, <laughs> even though I've anyway, uh, that's why I do, I, uh, and so what, what I realize is some, this is that if I get a really good book, I'll be tearing through it, and then I got to then, then I, I said, oh no, it's going to end, right, <laughs> and so I purposely slow up, slow up, so now I've got a point where if it's a really good book, I read it, and then Usually I don't read any I don't read anything else while I'm doing well I, I, I listen to some lectures now because of YouTube and, and I might pick up something or you know, an art or something like that I'm basically actually writing I, I like a, I, I usually like a magazine writings because you know magazines they can take their time to do the research and stuff like that where newspaper you know they, they throw anything out there first weekly is a little bit weekly is a better but magazines are the best because you have the three months that they gotta leave no anyway the point is uh, uh, but books, I just, uh, I, I savor them. I mean, a really good book, and this is a really good book, right? Uh, and it's about, well, I'm not going to tell you what it's about. Well, it's about Nigeria. In the, it's in the early, in the 60s right now. Uh, and, uh, I mean, let me just read one part from page uh, 155. Like, uh, and she has a structure that they follow this 
uh, this, I don't say family, but this, this woman and, and, her, and, and her twin sister, who does really look like the twin, or maybe and uh, a bunch of other characters in there. A lot of politics, you know, but it's Nigeria. <coughs> then she has this thing, uh, now right now I have it, it says, uh, book three, the world was silent when he died. And this book three one, and there's other things. So there's, 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 there's these little things like that, that because it's a novel, but these things are sort of accurate or like almost like essay kind of things. Let me get my glasses. Just for a second. Now, I, usually I'm reading in the daytime. I don't need my glasses, but I mean, I'm blue light, you know. Let me read this so I don't, well, I'm going to mess up because I'm reading. But I read in my head. There's nothing about, uh, uh, like, for instance, the, the, the title character, uh, her name is Olana. 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 But there's a lot of other, like, uh, uh, Olana, she's married to this, 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 this professor, right? It's not what, and his name is. Oding, Odingo, Odingbo. But when I read it, when I'm reading, you know, I'm reading in my head, I just give him any name, you know, like my grandmother, I name many things, I don't, I don't care. It's just it's in my head, it doesn't matter, I know what I'm talking about. Anyway, back to the point. There's just one little, um, it's a little paragraph, it's a big paragraph, a little paragraph, and a little, little sentence. Here you go. He writes about independence. The Second War changed the world order. Empire was crumbling and a vocal Nigerian elite, mostly from the South, had emerged. That's important. The North was weary. It, it feared domination from the more educated South and had always wanted a country separate from the infidel South anyway. Let me just say, uh, <coughs> the North is mainly a, a, a Muslim pop population, uh, and the South is mainly, I guess, uh, traditional, I guess, a little bit of Christian, I don't know. Uh, but the British had to preserve Nigeria as it was. Their prized creation, now they created, they, they made this north-south divide. They just, you know, how, you know that, that, that Berlin conference, they just, go, oh, boom. And, they, and British took this whole, whole thing. Anyway, their large market, and, well, a lot of stuff, right? Their thorn in France's eye, because remember, you had the, the, the Brits and the French, and they, they, they fought and fought over. They, they divided Af Africa more than the, the Belgians and the, and the Portuguese and the, well, the Italians were in there for a second, uh, for a little bit. Uh, who else was there? I don't know, whatever. Uh, uh, to perpetuate, the, yeah, to perpetuate the North, they fixed the, the, uh, the, the pre-independence election in favor of the North and wrote a new constitution which gave the North control over the central government. The British even wrote the Constitution, you know, come on now, Constitution for your country. I wonder if they ever rewrote, I don't know, Nigerian history that much, other than that, you know, uh, uh, other than that, uh, let me leave them alone, you know. But the Nigerians, I'm a, I'm a, let me reserve my comments for Nigeria. Let me, let me say, Ken said, well, that, 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 that whole, never mind, and the whole Biafran War, I don't want to get into that right now. The South, I guess they might get into that here, I'm not sure. The South, too eager for independence, accepted this constitution. With the British gone, uh, with, the British, uh, with the British gone, there would be good things for everyone. White salaries, a long, long denied Nigerians, promotions, uh, top jobs, nothing was done about the clamor of the minority groups. Uh, when I say minority, this means uh, the different clan groups, right? Uh, and the regions were already uh, com competing for fi co co competing so fiercely that some wanted separate foreign embassies. At independence in 1960, Nigeria was a collection of fragments held in a fragile class. So she, I, I, she writes very well. Uh, I love I love her language. I like the structure of the book, and it's a great book. You should you should read. I'm reading. I'm reading it. I'm slowing up. I'll be through it this week, you know, but uh, I have something else to read next week. So anyway, so this, I'm, I'm back now, and as you know, this the, the Sunday is like whatever happens, like 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 that. And Saturdays is like whatever happens day. Fridays is like a, a, a whatever I missed during the week I, 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 I talk to you about. Uh, Thursdays is audio drama day, and boy, we, we are, oh boy, I, oh my, happy.
happy clam. I'm a happy clam that opens up and opens up. Uh, Wednesdays is international kind of stuff, and Tuesdays is the uh, uh, U.S. kind of stuff. And uh, Mondays is a uh, me day. So tomorrow you get a you get a you get a me. And I've been off for a while. Uh, it's interesting uh, because when when you're not on social media, you're not really paying attention. Which uh, well, I, I've started to hold my stuff down. And uh, I only pay attention to certain people because most of the stuff is an echo chamber. You know, somebody gets something and then they comment on it. You see? Like, for instance, I love BTS, right? I, they, they have their opinions. I love BTS, right? And everybody's talking about Diddy and, and, and the, the Adams guy in New York, you know, the, the policeman that's now mayor. Uh, and uh, what else? Whatever. Because she always has an interesting, uh, let's call it street take, you know. Uh, 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 let's call it downtrodden take on everything, but it's still a, a echo to you. You, we oh, also about a little bit about uh, the stuff that's happening with uh, uh, with what the same uh, Janet Jackson. Everybody says Penny. I never really was into it. Anyway, uh, 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 Janet Jackson says something about Kamala Harris and whatever, and then they've been going back and forth on that because some some Negro peons done. They got their, their 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 underwear in a snit. And they're trying to cancel Janet Jackson for what she said. She didn't say that was particularly wrong. What's going on here? I mean, even I was, I, I didn't really read everything. Like I said, I'm not really interested in, 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 in the election. For me, it's a done, when I say a done thing, I, come on, come on, Harris. Um, the Donald, and we know they, they, they don't control anything anyway, so, you know their camps or whatever they're doing. But anyway, the Kamala, the, 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 the comedians that Kamala has uh, hanging with her, they're, they're all in a snit. And they, there's a whole hilarious thing. Of, I'm not paying attention to it. Why? Because it's a distraction. I got other things to do. Uh, now I pay most attention to, uh, I'm not even paying attention to what's happening in the, in the so-called Middle East, you know, the, 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 what we, let's call West Asia, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do call it? Uh, uh, Palestine, Gaza, and even uh, the, the, the the Russians and the, the Russians doing what they're doing, uh, but if I do have to pay attention, I, go, I pay attention to that. Some that you know, that Pepe guy is great, you know, uh, and Scott Ritter is is great. You know, I know Scott Ritter. I say no Scott Ritter because when I was working for uh, uh, in Washington D.C. when I was working for uh, Peace Watch, you know, whatever, <clears throat> you know, the whole thing, Ray McGovern and all them people like that. Be fair. A little fact for you. Ray McGovern got on the, on the radar, you know why? Because of Peace Watch. Actually, we called the Lauren, Lauren Elias. Lauren Elias was one of the producers of Peace Watch. She dogged him into it because he was part of this, this ex, you know, intelligence group that just was, you know, they they, they, they weren't, they just under under the radar. They were, and she hammered him until he finally came and got an interview. And then, boy, he hit him. <laughs> Ray McGovern. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and there's a bunch of other stuff happening. But I'll pay attention to people. There's a lot of people like Joe Horn. Here's what I pay attention to most. Joe Horn, anything that Joe's doing. Dr. Joe, Dr. Joe, Dr. Joe Horn. I'll tell you. I know Joe Horn when he was Joe Horn, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever because he hung at, you know, he hung at WBAI, you know, with, with some more interesting people. Well, them people, us people, right? Uh, I, I pay attention. I can't pay attention to... Well, let me leave that. Well, I can't pay attention to Mr. Neely Fuller that much because I used to get his uh, reports to his, his podcast. It was downloaded from uh, Victor uh, RS, uh, RWS, Victor, uh, Victor uh, Racist White Supremacy, but I don't know some, I don't know what, they, he hasn't been doing anything. Or maybe the people that, that, Ms., that Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. surrounds himself with now, uh, you know, they're trying to be, I, I, I don't know what they're doing. And I don't like the, their website. I don't be dealing with their website. So I did, you know, but I got the book. I got the book. So me and, me and Ms. Scully, we read the book. We read from the book every once in a while. It's on my YouTube channel. I post up on my YouTube channel. Uh, and, oh, to stay in touch with the streets, with that side of the world, you know, I got to listen to 5150. I'm sorry, man. Hey. <laughs> Balance is always good. Corey Hopin. Corey Hopin. Corey Hopin. First of all, Corey Hopin is a genius. I'm telling you, he's a genius. He's a very, very, in communications, he's top notch. 
right? And it just sheer street intelligence, top or just intelligence, top notch. I, I can't explain this to you, but and if you, you can't get it to to, to, to to Corey. Well, what can I tell you? Uh, so basically, it's it's between Joe Horn and Corey Hoko. I can get my you know whatever going. So what about the what about the women? I, look. I'm not going to say anything about the women, right? I, 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 I deal with men, right? That's it. I deal with men. The women, uh, you know, whatever, bless them, da, 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 da. But uh, for my battle, because in the long range, uh, uh, my ultimate goal is, uh, like, like Congress Neely Fuller Jr., I fight uh, uh, what they call racism, white supremacy. I think if you get rid of that phenomenon, that was started by the Europeans, uh, then uh, oh, I'm sorry, the co the colonizers, then all can be well. Anyway, uh, with, with when I say that the color, I like to say because the, the white supremacist sounds weird to me, you know, but the colonizer is the colonizer, and anybody can. And then in this day and age, people have colon their, your mind, the people's minds and bodies are colonized, right? And so what happens is. When you're, what, 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 my fight is with, 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 with the colonizer and, and the colonizer's agents or the colonizer's spawns or the colonizer's, I don't say appreciators, but the, the colonizers, right? And anybody can be a colonizer. That's why we have Afropeans and Negropeans because they do the work of the colonizer because they, 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 they know nothing about justice. And, and, and I'm looking for the, the ultimate liberation. That's my whole goal. And in that, in that, ultimate goal for the, for the ultimate li liberation then there's weapons you can use and my greatest weapon that I, that I use is uh, is audio drama that's my weapon of choice like that so because the, the colonizer they have the politics locked up they got the finance locked up uh, what else they got that they got the, they, they got the health the, the health industry locked up but it's very difficult to, 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 to have a lock on, uh, on culture. And audio drama deals with culture. I'm a cultural, well, if you go to, well, I, I don't have it. Well, my static web page is no longer exists, but you can get it from uh, uh, the Wayback Machine. Uh, I'm, a, I'm what's called a cultural revolutionary because revolutionaries go dang, then they have counter the revolution. It's just around, you're in, a, you're in a cycle like that. So, so since there's nothing new creatively under the sun, then I'm a cultural revolutionary. But in life, in this struggle, I'm an evolutionary. I'm an ev in fact, I've coined another term. I'm actually what's called, people say, well, you sound, you sound like a socialist. People say stuff like that. I'm what's called a nowist. A nowist. N-O-W-I-S-T. A nowist. I don't deal with future fantasies or like, Oh, I hope this is going to happen. I don't really deal with the past. I mean, yeah, history, the past. I know the history informs the future. I got you. I understand that. But I don't really deal with that. I deal with the now. I'm informed by that. I'm so, I took go so deep into the now and do the very now. But every time you get a now, the now automatically becomes the past. So I guess, you know, automatically becomes the past. But I do stuff for the now. And then doing stuff for the now, my eye is on the, 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 the future. It's like... There used to be a word. I had a T-shirt that Odorophoro. I never knew what the word meant, but somebody said the word means you can see right, just a little bit beyond the curve, right? It's like um, you, you say, "Well, that's like a prophet," you know. It's not. It's not really. It's like all all indications. Which, if you can get in so into now, you can in, you can have indications of where things are going. You know. One time I talked to James. Oh yeah, James wrote me a little nice. Well, every once in a while, James contacts. Because he used to be a normal radio, you know, he used to be the, the guy for normal, well, the, the historian, philosopher, religious person for, for normal radio, and, and I really love James. Anyway, so every once in a while he checks on me, and I, I'm like, oh, hey James, and I tell him to write something like that, which is very nice, you know. So some people check on him, make, make sure I'm still on the planet. But that's why I do Instagram, so if you want to know I'm still on the planet, just I post everything. Uh, anyway. James was telling me, I said, well, James, what about this Revelations Day? Because we talked religion. This is on the air, you know. He said, well, you know, it's like things are going, and there's only so many ways things can go. 
So revelation is like things were happening. And so there's only so many paths you can go. So somebody writes down one path and everybody gets enamored with that or it gets published. And then what happens? Well, then, you know, that's revelation. So, well, well, you know, I can, anyway. The point is, if, you, if, if you're so into the now, when you're walking with the now, and you're paying attention to the now, then it gives you indications of where things can go. And then people make a choice. You know, especially in this day and age where you got all this media, people are, are being influenced by whatever they're being influenced by. So, anyway, so that's what I do. So, I, so, 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 so I, I, uh, uh, I have a whole plan. Uh, we're going into uh, tomorrow's the thirtieth. Uh, so I'll talk about me. But then from the first, uh, uh, also I hung out with Lloyd Strayhorn for a while in the eighties with, with a bunch of other people, and uh, Lloyd Strayhorn numbers a new guy, the numerology. Right. And he says October is the preview month for the 10th, 10th month, and I'm like number one, 10th month. He's the preview for the next coming year. So what you do in October, right, more than likely will start manifesting in that coming year. So I got this thing. This is so wonderful. So so, so this October, right on Tuesday, I'm going deep. Talking about being an out, I'm going deep, deep, deep. I got my audio drama group. Think they're, they're going to be done. We got all kinds of things lined up. And I'm done writing to deep, to do, to do, to do, to do, to Stay tuned. You'll see about that. Uh, and then so I have October, November, December. Three months. Three is one of my numbers. Three months that I'm going deep into this thing. And uh, then I leave in uh, January for, for India. January, February, March. January, February, March. I'll probably come back in April in time for my wife's birthday. So it'll be three months, at least three months in India. That's how I can get her to come to India. Then I might be a little bit longer. Three months in India. So that's good because when I leave, the, the, the group that I'm getting together, then they won't have me around. Because I'm a, I'm a, if I talk about influence, I'm a whatever. So this, then they can do on themselves. Then when I come back, they'll be ready for the next phase. I'll come back to so it'll be February, not February 12th, April, May, June, July, about part of July, so four months going with them, and of course with with uh, with my peoples at the uh, the Bother Society for the Age, you know my peoples, you know the, the wisdoms, because I work with the, I work with I task with the uh, with the elders in this community. So 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 the the audio dramas with the, the younger people uh, in, going into their twenties, I think the younger people, and then I have the elders here, so I got that nice balance, right? So I come back with them, right? Then I ended, I guess that should be the end of July, July into August for about two weeks. I hang, I hang out uh, with, with Ian and, and, uh, and uh, the food and Dava. And that's that's very, I think, they, I think next year, okay, I hope I'm not letting out any secrets, but let me just say, I think they're trying to get this big guy, the AI, one that knows all about AI, the biggest kind of lecturer, they're trying to get him there. Like, so that's going to be very interesting. AI, artificial intelligence, and food. Anyway, so that then, and then, then probably because I didn't go this year, probably August, September, October. Maybe only two and a half months. I go to the states, get some stuff done. Then I come back here so as soon as I can. September, September, November, September, 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 October. I get back here, and then you know then a lot of stuff will be happening. So that's my schedule, you know. I got a lot of things going for that, to get that thing done. But in the meantime, I got to get, in fact, I'm trying to get a, a PA, a personal assistant, but it's not like, that. my personal assistant is for certain things that I they have to do because they won't allow me, they mean he ain't the boss, they won't allow me to go around by myself. Well, the old man, I did indeed, I did. Well, the school is getting very busy because he's got to organize. He's an organizer. He's got to organize a bunch of things. And he's always with me, but now he says, look, he's got to do this stuff. So you got to have people always with me. So i got to get a personal assistant. There's stuff i got to do with my, with my own health and my, uh, my exercises and stuff like that. And i got to walk over here. They, did, they, did. they won't let me do it. In fact, I had a little incident yesterday. Okay, let me tell you. There's this thing. We have, uh, I won't get it. It's over there. Uh, there's uh, castor oil. Yeah, there's this red, this castor oil, it's topical like that. Start using that to nice new skin and gets rid of bumps and stuff. Oh, bumps are going down. Uh, it's good, good, good. Use it with, uh, if you use it with uh, 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 
baking soda that's good to foliate bread. It's, it's very good for you. It, your skin, it goes into your skin, it goes into anything like that. But if you take castor oil, a cold press, and you could ingest that, you could put it with juice, a little bit with juice, and that's good for you like that system. Well, I've been doing it with, I take my avocado, my you know, sweated with the, with, the, with the flakes, with the sea salt flakes. I got some pumpkin seed, and I mash it up, and I drizzle a little bit of castor oil on it like that, and I, I ingest that. I ingested that the, the, uh, yesterday morning. Okay, well, that's fine. But I, I sort of really, I don't say messed up, but what I did was, here's my drink. Oh, I made a tea because I got cardamom pod, pods, and I got the bark cinnamon, and I made a tea. And the, and the cardamom is good for blood pressure to bring it down. Well, that's all I had in the morning. Then I had to, uh, I suppose, I'll meet uh, 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 Dale, uh, uh, my wife's son, you know, it, it, thing to do the food to do some stuff so i was in i was in the mall i wait for him to show up yeah i was that did download from the the wars you know app wars uh wi-fi whatever it is and then i started feeling like a little dizzy or do i didn't feel too well i so i went to the toilet and whew, got out and i felt a little bit better but then i was sweating right i sat there and i just i said oh this is bad and i knew what was happening my blood pressure had that crash. You know what I mean? I needed something to eat, but I was too weak to get up to go get something to eat because the chickens are there, whatever. And my brain was not, you know, I wasn't, whatever. So I was leaning on the cart because I had got some stuff from Clicks and I had my bag and I, I leaned on the cart and I was, I was, I was just really started sweating. There was a sister, uh, you know, you know, older, like a, she must have been a, a early 30s, her 30s, something like She was sitting next to me, she was watching me. I almost fell over and she said, she put a hand on me and said, you all right? I said, no. <laughs> but, but after a while, I said, after a while, she said, well, can I, can I help you? I said, well, I just think I need something to eat. If I could just go, she said, well, can, can you walk? Can you make it there? You know? And I realized it was checkers that there's a, a, a pie king store. I said, I just need to get something to eat. So let me try to get the pie king. So I'm holding on to the car going there. She has her, her, her cart, you know. So we're both going through the, the checkers to get to the other side to get to the, the pie king store. You know, the, the, the little pies, you know, the meat pies, you know, like steak and cheese or the, 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 the chicken pie, whatever. So I got in there and I thanked her. She was very concerned. Well, since we walked that way and we made it, so I said, I got a, 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 a mutton pie, you know, because I'm really, right, right. I got the mutton pie and started eating it. And right away, I felt better. So I got my strength back. But the, here's the funny thing. If you see, see I, have a, I have a medical orientation. Let's put it that way. Background. And uh, so I knew what was happening. But if you're there by yourself and you know what's happening, but you can't do anything, uh, you know, it's it's a weird kind of thing. Right. So I just I just I guess I just needed her to 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 just talk me through it. To, 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 to lend moral support. So because of her, I could, after, I mean, because I must have been there for like half, about 45 minutes, just whew, tell you, boy, I can't get up. I don't know what's going to happen. Da, 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 da. And so that, you know. So anyway, so I made it. And I even got my, uh, and you see, I haven't had a, 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 so I bought a little stuff, you know, we'll go shopping later, but I don't know what else I got. Let me show you. My favorite cookie chocolate chip cookies like that. I haven't had it in months, so I treated myself. And last night I done pigged out. Um, I took about, uh, I say pigged out, I did a whole crow with them. I got some left right now. But I, I'll be all right. I will, I'll be disciplined. I won't, <laughs> I won't, I won't eat no more of those. You know, because I don't, they also got my, uh, oh, I got my, uh, I'm sorry, am I taking a long time? It's all right. Well, it's not all right for you, but I'm back, man. I haven't, I haven't talked to you all in a long time, but I'm back. But I also got another thing that I got. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me show you. Oops. Sorry about that. Oh. I turned it upside down because the oil starts separating. I got this butter, this uh, nut butter, cocoa macadamia. It's my favorite. Very expensive. It's my favorite, right? And what I do, I haven't opened it yet because I'm. I don't even know when I'll eat it. A lot of times when I get stuff, even the the, 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 cook, the cookies or something like that, 
I don't do anything with it. For, <laughs> I have it. And it's almost like since I have it, then I don't, I don't need to do anything with it. But what I do is I take an apple, I put the soak it in the, 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 the baking soda. And I don't put the vinegar in there. I leave it alone. I get all the whatever. Then I cut it into slices, like maybe uh, 12 slices, right? And I take and I uh, I put the, the, you can do this with peanut, people do it with peanut butter or whatever, but I do it with this butter. It's my favorite snack, right? I don't be snacking with the chips and stuff like that, you know, putting all that grease in here and stuff like that, like that, which is why you do the, uh, you do the, 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 the castor oil. Anyway, so uh, so we start we, we 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 have begun again on that you know I do these kind of things and you see my the lines are coming back because I have the bell's palsy thing so that's one of the reasons why I got to do this for I do this sometimes I do my face and stuff while I do my face to get this back and uh, and, I, and my exercise I got to do that but hopefully hopefully because I still feel it. Here, you know, the Bell's palsy came down on this side. At least I can blink my eye a little bit. Before I couldn't even move it, I couldn't move like that. So that's getting better. This one doesn't really. This one, I have, almost have to use my whole face. So those muscles got to get better, and I got to do that stuff. So by the time I get back to India for further treatment, because I got to make sure the hip is all right, the ankle things, because you're an old person, you, you got to make sure your ankles are stable and your hip, because you know you don't want to fall, blah blah. Uh, um, I think I'm gonna take some. Uh, I think I'm gonna take martial arts class with my healer, who's who's a martial artist, I think a Indian martial arts and stuff like that, and get my strength back. And this time, we'll get my strength back so that by this time next year, I should be in full force. Well, you know, we'll see what happens. Anyway, so that's it. I want to go because I talked too long, and we'll talk to you again sometimes. Later, later.